this term industry funded research. In the pet food industry, a lot of these big companies like the Mars Inc., the Nestle Inc., the Colgate Palmolives, a lot of these companies will donate a lot of money to universities. Nowhere in this world would it be acceptable if I was to walk up to a police officer, let's say before a court hearing and say, here's a slice of pizza that I bought you before we go into court. He would lose his job if he accepted the slice of pizza from me. Or if a soda company was to walk up to a teacher and say, here's a $100,000 professor so-and-so, I think you're a great teacher. It would not be acceptable to any parent who had a child that that teacher's taking money from a soda company in case he talks about sugars being okay in foods and so on and so forth. In our industry, in the pet food industry, you see it all the time where the industry will donate copious amounts of money to these universities, and then these same companies will ask these universities to fund studies for them. What's your take on these nutrition universities in our pet sphere accepting monies from the industry? Well, I think it's a huge conflict of interest. It was common practice for pet food companies to give free pet food to students, to veterinary students who had dogs or cats. We had a student researcher who went and took photographs of the giveaway day at Cornell's veterinary school. And there were just mountains of boxes of pet foods. And the students would get free food for their animals during the entire time they were in veterinary school guess which product they were likely to uh, recommend to their clients afterwards. I mean, obviously, that's why the pet food companies are doing it. If the pet food companies are teaching the nutrition classes, they're going to be recommending pet foods. And they're going to be teaching veterinary students how to distinguish between one kind of pet food and another, even if there's really nothing to distinguish. Foods for different breeds, for example. Silliest thing I ever saw. They have exactly the same ingredients with slightly different proportions. You can't believe it makes any difference. It's a marketing technique. You wrote an incredible book, The Unsavory Truth, which brings us to this term industry-funded research. Because first of all, not very many pet parents around the world even know what industry-funded research is. And of course, in the pet world, I'm going to assume at least 90% of the research that's come out in the way of pet food research is industry funded. Can you talk to us a little bit about this term industry funded research? When industry funding gets into it, it it skews and biases the research. I get letters all the time from food companies or trade associations saying, we've got $50,000, we're looking for studies that will demonstrate the benefits of our product. That is a biased question. Uh, it's not an open-ended scientific question. They're not going to fund studies that are likely not to show benefits. But the kind of industry-funded research that's going on now is really marketing research. Pet food companies are not interested in funding studies that might show something wrong with their product or show that their product is no better than any other product. I mean, that's when we get back into the study that I want done. The most expensive, complete and balanced pet food versus the cheapest complete and balanced pet food. Who's going to pay for that? The company that makes the cheap one but doesn't want to show that a more expensive one is better. And the company that makes the more expensive one doesn't want to risk showing that it's no different than the one that's cheapest. So there's nobody who wants to fund this kind of thing. And it's not being done. I know when I was speaking with Dr. Jason Fung on this, he went crazy. Basically, the statement was... So industry-funded studies, of course, want you to fund studies that are going to benefit it. They're, they're not idiots and they're not uh, charities. There's a real agenda there. And there's been a lot of research in the last 10 years to show that if you take money to do a study then you are far more likely, like 10 times more likely, to find a result that is positive to whoever funded you. So you see this in sugar studies, for example. So there's been a number of studies that have looked at sugar, and some have said that sugar really increases obesity, and some have said that sugar really doesn't increase obesity. And of course, when you break it down, so they're roughly equal, but when you break it down by who funded what study, it's interesting because something like 85% of the studies not funded by sugar-related industries found that sugar is bad, and 
85% of the studies funded by Coca-Cola and the rest found that, hey, sugar's not that bad for you. It doesn't cause obesity at all. So it's it's a really important problem to see who funds the studies. You know, everything gets lumped into, oh, the science says, not looking at who actually funds it. Because if you were to actually look at who funds it, you should actually say not, oh, the studies say that sugar uh, doesn't cause obesity. It should be that Coca-Cola study shows that sugar doesn't cause obesity. Then you'd be like, okay, yeah, well, you know, show me a study that Coca-Cola didn't fund. 